Hey everybody, we've got the uh, vehicle running. So some surprising news, just thought I'd add on another video and uh, give you a bit of information there. Chuff chuff. All right, up this end you're gonna have, uh, it's gonna be rocking around like that. That uh, catch can's gonna be bub bubbling with oil. There's some uh, fumes coming out there. And that's the chuff chuff, what it looks like to confirm the cracked piston. All right, we'll put that on. All right, so just because it's running like that, doesn't mean it's a cracked piston. It could be a flogged injector, but because of the chuff chuff, that's the compression blowing through the piston and coming back up through the crankcase to the top of the engine. Chuff chuff, every time that cylinder comes around, chuff chuff. Yes, this is the one with the, uh, as it turns out, it's not actually a blown fuse. Well, not yet anyway. It's quite distracting. It's hard to get in there. It's hard for you to see, but the fuse is not blown. It's melted. So there's a lot of heat in the area for whatever reason. So that will have to be looked at as a separate issue. But we know that it hasn't cooked the contents of the vehicle or the wiring because everything's still working. So it's actually not as bad as it looks, is what we believe at this stage. So butter bing, butter boom, watch the videos to the end and watch the next one. Subscribe, turn the bell on, and please don't forget to hit that like button. Let's have a look in this catch can. Just firstly, so what's the moral of the story? When you've got a flat battery, don't go looking for problems because you'll find problems that maybe necessarily aren't, aren't necessarily your problems, if you know what I mean. So this battery doesn't look in bad condition on a visual. You'd have to charge it to test it properly and that's what i've been doing so we'll continue the charging notice on the terminal there there's a space there so i don't know what's going on there either if there's a washer missing or someone's been in there they've put something in between or the bolt's just in the wrong spot but try and fix that sort of thing up too if you notice that all right this catch can, oh, catch oh, can. we could have a catch can video what's going on with the catch can oh what do we got in here catch can St full of steel wool catch can is this a homemade job? Is this how it works? Is this what you do with a catch can? Look at that, right? Beautiful. There's nothing in there anyway, right? It's just all, all this, mate. You can use this to uh, clean. Mate, that's the catch can filter, right? Put, put in the comments. Let me know everything you're thinking about this job at the moment, right? Catch can, let me see. The pipe's missing, so we can't just get rid of it. Mmm, good old catch can, you know, not something that I really, is that the first catch can lid I've ever taken off? I don't know, it could be. Is that even how it goes on right? Doesn't even, it just feels sloppy, doesn't feel right. What's going on? See if I can work out even how to get a lid on a, can you believe I'm even touching a catch can? Oh, yuck! So disgusting, that thing, ugh! I think it'll void your warranty, it's disgusting. So what is going on with this vehicle? Well, for a start, it's an absolute grot. I mean, to be honest, I'll just say it how it is. Sorry, everyone. Sorry for the people that don't like it. I'm sorry for you that you don't like it. Clean up your mess. Look at it all. And look at all this grot in there. That is just so disgusting. Please get your car cleaned. Why should I even have to? I'm not putting a seat cover on this to protect the seats. I'm putting a seat cover to protect me from the filth of this vehicle. It's just disgusting. Oh. Terrible. Anyway, at least the engine bay is a lot better than, isn't it? As long as I stay out of the car. Isn't that bad when the engine bay is so much cleaner and more desirable than the uh, inside the vehicle? Anyway, um, so what's going on here? we really like to know what's going on here. So we know, you know, bad connections and stuff, resistance creates heat. So how, how have we got so much heat to this thing? Hasn't blown the fuse. It's melted a little bit of plastic on the side there. You can see this see this U-shaped section just here. Well, that's that one's dropped a little bit. This is a bit icky sticky, the 80 amper here. This is a 120, I believe. Some cars have got a 140. The listing at Toyota says it's meant to be a 140, but the lid says 120. And I believe the other 1KD FTVs, LC 150s, the Pradas have got a 120. Let me know in the comments as well, Ken. Thank you. Um, so what's going on? Anybody got any ideas? Because... I would like to know why it's like that. I don't know why it's like that at the moment. Looks like the stock standard alternator to me. Customer doesn't know that it's been changed. Um, 
it, I'll just check the charge rate was 14.1. So has it got a booster diode on here? Maybe. Is that that one? That's not that, is it? No. I can't remember. I'd have to go back to the books anyway. I'm just going to pull that out and have a look at it because I can. Now, that's just a good old fuse, right? So no problem. That's cool. Because um, it's a bit that colour, isn't it? The, probably hasn't got a booster. Or where does it go down here? So I forget where it goes. I'd have to look at the... But that is what I'm really focused on. What is going on there? No idea. Um, the starter motor down there looks all original. Everything that I can see, it looks original. I can't really for the life of me work out why there'd be so much heat there to be able to melt that. And even after the engine's done, we can go ahead and replace that. But what's to say it's not going to continue and happen again? This is my issue. I want to know what's going on there. And I guess maybe 14.1 at idle on three cylinders with a battery that was really low on voltage and needs charging. Um, maybe the alternator is overcharging, so we'll keep it on that once it's fully charged up. Once we get the engine in, get it all running. Um, yeah, I'm really, I'm not the expert on that one. I'm not sure why that's, uh, why that, I don't know why I'm covering that stuff up anyway, habit. But um, yeah, anyway, whatever, um, there's your little update. So the engine runs, it's definitely a cracked piston, so business as usual. Thanks for watching, you know, if you want, subscribe. If you want, hit the like button and we'll catch you on the next video. See ya. Look, for people that like longer videos and more info, so why did it crack a piston? Okay, so it's done a bit over 300,000 Ks. As far as we know, at this stage, it's got the original injectors in there. It's a 2009, which we know those injectors were not DLC coded, so they're long overdue. That being said, it's got a catch can. <laughs> Maybe that's something to do with it. Maybe it's not, you know. You just don't need catch cans. But anyway, reasons why. It's got a bull bar that reduces uh, airflow to the cooling system. It's got a light bar. It's got some driving lights. Also helping reduce the airflow to that grill, as you can see. Blocks the uh, flow there. Not so good. All contributing factors. Also, here we go. 70 series tyres. By putting bigger tyres on... You've geared the vehicle up, making it work harder all the time. Um, so that's another contributing factor. And of course, probably one of the other ones that you should also look at is the roof rack. It's got one of the higher roof racks. Not that it's got much on it at the moment. And a light bar. Bada bing. Just things that can contribute. Now, was he towing in fourth, as we probably recently discussed in the video, and we'll discuss again another time because there's a number of reasons for that. If you missed it, get and watch those couple of videos that go for about 20 minutes. There's a lot of really good information in both of those, two nights in a row that come out recently, depending when this video comes out, I suppose. But anyway, a little bit of additional information because I know people would ask. And the other key contributor that we see, the number one by, by far without any shadow of any doubt, vehicles with chips were always the ones that copped it the earliest and the soonest and most common and uh, of course the chip's gone now but he did tell me it used to have a chip on it so for whatever reason that's gone that's fine um and of course the remaps and the tunes are the in thing these days yes no not if you want to don't want a crack piston if you want reliability um leave it alone do your maintenance do your injectors so i'll say it again anyone with an old 120 anyone with an 09 10 or 11 prada i don't really give a stuff what you think if your injectors are okay or not if you want it to last, you want the correct combustion, hit me on a Monday morning at 7.30am for those injectors with a text message. Keep watching videos before it's too late. If you've got a 12, 13, 14, once again, even a 15, probably DLC coded injectors, um, more likely from 13, 14. The manufacturing started in 210, but late 2010, there were some non-full DLC injectors, which got into vehicles a year, two, up to three years later. We're finding the averages about... 2012, you're pretty safe to say you've got full DLC injectors. If they haven't been removed, that's a bonus. But if you take it into your standard service at the dealership, every 40,000 Ks, they're supposed to remove the injectors and check the valve clearances. But they at least remove the fuel pipes and allow the contamination from those fuel pipes to the injectors, which is another contributing factor. And then, of course, you've got reman injectors, which are partly rebuilt and someone else's old injectors. So there's so many reasons to have wrong combustion. Get it right, and you should be right. Of course, you don't always know the history of your vehicle, and you can have a bad run. Like I said, you could take it into somewhere. They're doing the service, and they just get in here and pull those pipes off, and butter bing butter boom literally all right it's not a laughing matter is it so get your maintenance done watch the videos get in the crack piston fund 
because bada bing bada boom wouldn't it cost this guy 15 over fifteen thousand dollars for a brand new long engine fitted with new injectors which is pretty good value for money i said over that anyway optional extras on top of course just given a starting price ballpark numbers you know you could do it for that but at the end of the day what's better 500 or fifteen thousand dollars anyway catch you on the next video see ya and that my friends is definitely what a crack piston looks like at the rear end of a Toyota Land Cruiser LC150, Toyota Prado 1KD FTV, crack piston.